Afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the Toolbox Virtual Studio. Um, today, we're going to be doing a restorative yet practice. Um, just a little bit for information um, when we call it restorative and when I call it yin. Um, so, Ross, it's the same principle, which is a super relaxed class um, where we highly come up with the floor and we use lots of props. Um, the you find your edge, you hold the poses for a long time, and it's all about relaxing into the posture. Um, when it's yin is when I'm working along the traditional Chinese medicine meridian lines, like today. And that is when we're focused on a particular organ, and the organ that we're working with today is the kidney meridian. So the kidney meridian starts in the inferior of the baby toe. It runs across the tops of the foot, all the way across to the arch of the foot, and then it makes its way up the ankle and into the inner leg, inner thigh, and then comes up and kind of round and comes up towards the back to meet with the kidneys. And um, so that's the meridian line we're working with. And so to target that area, it's going to be a lot of hip openers. And um, where the two kind of modalities of healing meet is that in yogic or Ayurvedic philosophy, there's a belief that unstored feelings, undealt with emotions, reside in the hips, and this is what causes blockages and um, discomfort and illness. And so what we're doing is opening up this meridian line. And just something different, we're actually going to start on our feet, and you can come to standing and just to stimulate. So this is a practice that you can do. Um, TCM says we should do this about five minutes of every day just to support our kidney meridian because it is seen as the powerhouse and so what we're going to do is just slowly stuck stomp your feet into your mat um or into the mat or the floor so nice and flat just gently starting to wake up our kidney meridian and support it and i've already said in tcm it's seen as the powerhouse um the kidneys or what supply the body um, with clean and fresh blood. It is also, so it's a big part of our, um, what's it? Um, so what was it, adrenal? Sorry, we were talking about it earlier. I forgot the word. Um, oh, the system to clean up. Yes, the system. The, oh, it oh, works with the adrenal system. Yes, it's the adrenal system, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, it's just all about helping us maintain health. So you're just stomping gently into the feet starting to wake up into the meridian line. And for just a couple more moments to stop. You're gonna keep going, just to show you if you didn't get it. So we're working from the inferior of the baby toe, across the top of the foot, circling into the ankle, all the way up the leg, kind of goes in behind the hip and into the kidney. So just a couple more stops, stomps rather, just waking up into that area. Then we can also bring our hand to our belly because we're working with our chakra system. And so just below the belly button, starting to tune in to our sacral chakra. And this is our energy house of our emotions, our trust in ourselves and life, and our ability to allow things to flow. So just stomping, stomping. And if you can, while you're stomping, See if you can bring to your mind's eye the color of orange. Start to slow it down until you're eventually still. Hands placed below the belly button. Eyes closed. Color of orange in the mind. Sit in the intention for free flow of life force, energy, chi. The sound associated with our sacral chakra is BAM, B-A-M. And beginning the class, chanting three BAMs. Deep breath in. BAM. BAM. Uh, 
setting an intentional or collective intentional intention to allow ourselves to feel. Allow ourselves to create and to flow. Gently clutching your eyes open and coming to lie on your back. So I'm just going to stop over. I don't know if my sisters and more and more is going to be doing the class and I will be directed. So our first position, or what we're going to need in terms of props is a blanket. So if you don't have a bolster type thing, take your blanket and uh, fold it up. And then you want to roll it up to make a tube-like um, structure. And we're going to bring this tube-like structure to sit at the base of the spine. And you're going to lie completely back with the legs straight. So starting to lift that sacral energy, the place that we're going to be working with today. So get yourself comfortable, get your props. Um, you might also need like a block or a cushion and I always advise something warm to throw over your shoulders for Shavasana. So not very prop heavy today. So get yourself on your back, create your tube like or if it's um, props with pillows to sit at the base of the spine, legs are straight, hands are down by the side. So I want you to find the shape, your body's expression of the pose. In yin yoga, we hold the poses passively. So there's no muscle engagement. So that we can start to strengthen the connective tissues, the joints, the ligaments, and the bones. We hold each pose for a minimum of one minute, and a maximum can be all the way up to eight minutes. And I understand that this can be a challenge at times, but with Yin, I want you to try and settle in. Breathe and commit to the stillness. Always connect with your body and your breath. Allow yourself to come into the pose slowly, so no sudden movements, no jerking, no pushing, no ramming. And if there's sensation, it should be about two thirds of the maximum depth. Always leaving space, or leaving space for the effect of time. As I said before, we're focusing on our hips today to release the stuck and stagnant energy, increase our, inflexi increase our flexibility, and thus put us in a position for more flow, more acceptance, more peace, more help. So finding the shape, arms extending out down by the side, palms facing up. If you feel comfortable, allow your eyes to close. And keep bringing into your mind's eye the color orange. And gently repeating to ourselves that mantra vam throughout the class. Allowing the vibration to settle into the body.
you can't talk about yin without thinking of yang. And when we think of yin and yang, we're talking traditional Chinese medicine. And so our yin energy is our female energy. It's that lunar energy, moon. It's about receptivity. It's about um, intuition. The kidney is a yin. It has elements of yin and yang, but it's mostly yin. And the element when we're talking about the kidney is water. The season is winter. And so it's all about rest, restoration, relaxation. If we think about hibernating, allowing ourselves to be very comfortable and warm, sheltered. All of this or actions like this, self-care along these lines all support our kidney. Preparing ourselves to move, we're going to take our last three breaths here. If you'd like, you can inhale gently through the nose and exhale gently through the mouth. And as you exhale, I want you to imagine yourself sweeping the house clean and ridding your body of any stuck energy, toxins, stress. So once you've completed your three breaths, gently draw the knees in towards you, keeping the feet onto the floor. Push into the feet and lift the block or the rolled up blanket that you have underneath your hips, pushing it to one side before lowering the hips back down. Find a slight tuck of your chin in towards the chest. So I'm not gonna give many um, cues around alignment because our yin practice is not so focused about alignment. It is really about working with your body and not causing any strain or stress. We're coming into happy baby. That means drawing your knees in towards your chest, separating the knees as if you could pull each knee into each armpit. And then gently lifting the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling and grabbing a hold of the soles of the feet, either from the inside or the outside. So whichever feels most available, most natural, most comfortable for you. If reaching for your feet is impossible or not available, you can reach for the knees pushing through or reaching behind for the out or the inner, the backs of the thighs, or for the ankles. Pulling down on each ankle is another way to experience this opening into the hips. Or if you have a strap or a towel, you can run it across the soles of the feet and then pull down on the straps of the towel. So again, finding your version of happy baby. So the principles of yin, I remind us, is to come into the shape of the pose, find your edge. So that's about two thirds maximum depth. Remembering at all times to respect your body's limits. It's then about committing to be still, relaxing all the muscles and trying not to fidget. And then we hold. We hold the pose, not the breath. And we learn to surrender. We learn to be okay with what is.
not trying to get over things, not trying to get under things, but learning how to breathe through. So in yin, we don't use any kind of controlled breathing. So there's no ujjayi, there's no constriction of the breath or the throat, but there's still an awareness of the breath. And if we can, as much as possible, trying to breathe in and out through the nose. Because when we breathe in and out through the nose, we calm the central nervous system. When we breathe out the mouth, we tend to pant and the breath can get quite short triggering our fight or flight response. And here we want to do the opposite. We want to stay and experience. And so the way in which we can support ourselves, support our mind is through the breath. Calm, gentle, even breath in and out through the nose. A breath that tells our mind that there's nothing for us to fight here. There's nothing for us to run from. We are in fact safe. We're exactly where we need to be. We're on time. There's nothing to fix. We're good. Minimum effort, maximum benefit. Put down the parts of us that want to strive, achieve, do. And just like that beautiful full moon we got to witness last night. Just allow ourselves to be. Almost there. So that's a little note from Zamor saying, so intense. <laughs> In case you were wondering, yes it is. You're not alone. Preparing to move. Last three breaths here, nice and slow. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. And it's good, speak it out. So don't push anything down, feel what you feel. Last breath in, breath out. Take the hands from underneath the feet to the outside of the knees and gently draw the knees together. Knees staying together at the chest. If you can, reach opposite hand for opposite elbow or interlace the hands around the shins as you draw the knees down towards the chest, we're gonna rest here. Allow your feet to be soft, yes. So unlike our other practices of Hatha and Vinyasa, where we keep the awareness and hold the muscles in the body, I want you to completely relax here. Allow the feet to be soft, the glutes to be soft, the jaw, the tongue, the facial muscles, chest, shoulders, belly, relax. 
minimum effort, maximum benefit. I'm going back to the reference of the moon when we think of minimum effort maximum benefit is the moon has so many different stages and i doubt when it's a quarter or half full is it yearning to be full or anything else it just allows itself to be where it is and trust that its beauty shines through no matter what and that's the same for you is sometimes we're all the way there sometimes we're a quarter way there but just trusting that we are always beautiful always perfect always on time a big mantra that i work with for myself is i'm doing nothing wrong It's to counter the kind of young energy we live with most of our days, the strive, get up, do more, be more. That in these moments of stillness, we often feel like there should be something else I should be doing. This work is important too. All right. Gently lower the soles of the feet onto the floor. We're going to keep working with the hips and taking your right ankle across your left knee for a figure four. And then lifting the left foot off of the floor. Right hand is gonna come in between the space, between the thighs. Left hand is on the outer left thigh and you can interlace the hands either above that left knee or underneath that left knee, whichever feels most available to you. And then a gentle drawing of that knee in towards the chest as we start to open up into that right hip. So the places in which, as I said, we are still working with our sacral chakra and our sacral chakra is all about allowing ourselves to feel and express our emotions, our passions, our sexuality. And far too often, because of the young society we live in, hyper-masculine society that we live in, um, our feelings and emotions are not so valued and we tend to push things down. And as I said, in Ayurveda, we believe, or yoga philosophy believes that we hold these emotions in our hips. And what I found is that any yoga practice actually serves to put our mental selves in touch with our physical selves. So it's a great place to begin to connect with feeling as we allow our bodies to feel. We allow ourselves to also tune into our emotions. It's a different kind of wisdom. It's the wisdom of the body.
taking your final three breaths. Once you've completed the three breaths, gently lowering that left foot to the floor, followed by the right foot. And just taking a moment to rest. If you'd like to extend the legs, extend the legs. If you'd like to shake them out, shake them out. Again, comes that idea of allowing yourselves to feel, not questioning how you feel and giving yourself permission to react to express you're doing nothing wrong. We're transitioning ourselves into dragon. So staying on the right hip, we'll come back for the left. So we're gonna go all the way through on the right side and then come back and do the left side. So coming up, you can either roll to the side, lift, do whatever feels most appropriate. Come onto your knees hands and knees actually rather. Let's do a cat cow on the inhale, drop the belly, tilting the chin and the tailbone up towards the ceiling. And on the exhale, rounding the spine. Two more, great way to move energy through the body. Inhale, drop the belly, tilt the tailbone and the chin up. Exhale, round the spine. Actively push the ground and the chest away from the floor. Last time, inhale. And we exhale. Let's pause in our exhale, taking three breaths here, nice and soft and relaxed, head hanging heavy. Before coming to a neutral spine, right foot is going to step in place of where that right palm is. So feel free to bring something underneath that left knee. So prop yourself up. So a cushion or your blanket. So we're coming into what we call dragon um, and in our uh, vinyasa would be our runner's lunge. So both hands are going to be on the inside of that right foot. You can either stay on the fingertips or again, bring something to lift the floor. Bring your cushion or if you've got another towel or something and you want to roll it up to plant the hands onto the block. Or you, so we're not coming onto the forearms. Oh, just if you, yeah, just like that. So keeping the hands straight and just working into that hip. You can tuck the chin and you can lunge if you'd like and tucking the chin in towards the chest. So there is a lunge of sending the hips forward. Yep, just like that, Amina. So sending the hips forward, but listening again, finding your body's edge. So that's respecting your body's limits. Remember not go to the full expression of the pose because we do spend time. So giving enough space for the pose to develop. Coming back to the color, color orange, the mantra of So the sacral chakra, also known as one's own place, is located just below the navel and above um, our reproductive and sexual organs. And the chakra taps into the energies of our creativity. And these energies encompass physical creativity. And so this is literally the power to, of procreation and fertility. Mental creativity, the ability to think outside the box, 
and free the imagination. Emotional creativity, our insights into ourselves as well as others. And the ability to freely and uniquely express our feelings. So blockages in this area can be experienced as that feeling of feeling stuck. On a physical level, I spoke about it with me, it manifested as fibroids, heavy periods. Mentally, not being able to really trust myself. Trust in my process to create. So again, that when I say that feeling of being stuck, sometimes knowing where you or what you want or feeling like you don't have what it takes to bring forth um, whatever it is that you desire. From a website to a meal, it's like that energy. And that's why it comes back to it links with Chinese medicine is our kidney. It's that life force energy that ability to face our lives, that feeling like things should be or could be different, not in allowing ourselves to flow and be okay with things as they are. We're going to stay here. You can come up for a second if you'd like. So come out of the lunge, lift the hips and take a bit of a break. And we're gonna go a little deeper into the pose when we return. We're going to keep the left hand down, bring the right hand onto the inside of the right knee as you push the knee away from your body. So out and you turn onto the outer edge of the right foot. So you can also turn your chest and if you'd like, you can look over the top shoulder or if this is too much for your neck, you can just gently tuck the chin in and look towards that left shoulder. So whatever feels most appropriate for you, just working deep into that hip. So again, as we work here, not pushing anything down, all feelings are valid. Feel what you feel, see what you see, allow. Last three breaths. No rush. We're gently bringing that right foot back flat onto the floor. Right. Hand onto the floor. Taking a moment here. Becoming before coming into a virgin, a version of pigeon. So we're not going to go full throttle. You want to walk that right foot across towards that left hand so that if you can imagine which is part of our creative sucker, imagining one day our shin being parallel to that front edge of the mat. And then your left leg is bent. So you're sitting, so in pigeon, traditional pigeon, we're usually not collapsing into that hip, but I want you to bring that right hip onto the floor. So right hip is on the floor, left leg is bent back behind you. Right leg is bent out in front of you. Bring your cushion or your rolled up um, blanket towards the front of the room, stacking it up as high as possible. So bringing the ground up so that we can lie 
either resting the forehead on the arms or on the pillow, wherever you can breathe. Shoulders nice and soft, belly nice and soft, relax into the hips. Breath relaxed. So when we talk about the chakras, um, we explained at the beginning that they're important because they are what ensures that our life force energy and life force energy is called different things in different um, cultures. Um, some may call it prana, some call it mana, some call it chi, some call it the Holy Spirit. Um, here in South Africa, Umoya, and so it's this energy that basically life force energy, it's that energy to do your life, to, to, to do what you came here to do, essentially. And for each of us, it's a different purpose. And it's that ability to connect with purpose, with truth, um, to feel safe, to feel that we can create. Um, and in TCM, where they call it qi, they believe, traditional Chinese medicine believes that the kidneys are the powerhouse because they store all our reserve qi or energy. And so when the heart qi is low, it turns to the kidneys. When the spleen qi is low, it turns to the kidneys. And so it's so important to keep finding ways to restore and to support our kidneys. And like I said, so I showed you at the beginning of class, stomping your feet on the ground five minutes a day is a great way to find the balance. Making sure that you get adequate rest is a great way to support um, the kidneys. Eating a balanced diet is a great way to support our kidneys. Feeling our feelings and expressing our emotions is a great way to support our kidneys. Practicing hip openers from time to time, working with this meridian line is an incredible tool to help us to support our kidneys. Thus support our life force. It's really, about teaming up with ourselves. Final three breaths. Before you gently bring yourself up, so pushing hands into the floor, lifting the chest, keeping the chin tucked in, swinging that left foot from behind you out towards the right, so leaning over to that right side, and then making your way onto your back with your legs extended out in front of you, and resetting. Recommitting. To finding balance through our sacral chakra. And flow through our kidney meridian. It is two different systems. And so there's a bit of an overlap. When we also talk about kidneys, we start to work into the next level of chakra and that sits um, it's our, at our core center and that's got to do with our willpower. 
and our resilience. When our kidneys are out of balance, the emotion that we feel a lot is fear. Fear to speak our truths, fear to think out the box, fear to express ourselves, fear in our ability to create. Starting with the figure four, we're going to bring the feet up, soles of the feet are flat onto the floor, knees are bent, left ankle, so if you could just shift your head around so that when you do it, you know. So your left ankle is going to cross over your right. Hands are going to come onto the inside. Left hand is inside, right hand is on the outside of the thigh, either interlacing behind the knee or on top of the knee. Find your body's shape, its expression of the pose. Find your edge, respecting your body's limits. <laughs> Find stillness, which means relax the muscles and try not to fidget. Hold the pose. Learn to surrender. Nothing to get over and uh, around, we move through. We breathe through. And so as I speak of these places and the which and the ways in which our energy can get stuck, um, some things may be true for you, some may not be. So it's all very subjective. Um, and so you access the benefits of these practices by learning to hear and feel the signals that your body is sending you. So noticing what rings true for you. And this work takes a lot of courage. It asks us to be completely open, honest and vulnerable with ourselves. Last three breaths. For gently lowering the right sole of the foot to the floor, followed by the left. Taking a moment to rest. Legs bent or extended. Might feel good also to shake. Another practice actually what you just did is stomping your feet and your hands onto the floor. And so this is also Kundalini and just allowing ourselves 
to release any pent up anger we might be feeling, frustration, right? We have this belief that some feelings are more valid than others. So it's like, be happy, don't allow yourself to, you know, it's negative, but all feelings are valid. Feel what you feel. We're gonna come onto our hands and knees, setting ourselves up for dragon. So what I'm talking about with the whole feelings is this concept called um, toxic um, like positivity. And there's this like, everything's okay. And I'm just a positive person. I practice yoga and I only see the good. And uh, so left foot is forward. And so, you know, just noticing if we sometimes do that to ourselves and not allow ourselves to feel everything. I think also with women, it's this idea of niceness is, you know, nice and happy and it ain't all pretty, but it can all be fucking beautiful. So leaning the hips forward, find your edge, respecting your body's limits. Your hands can be supported if you'd want to bring the flow up by bringing something underneath your hands or coming onto your fingertips. And then lastly, just tucking the chin in towards the chest and allowing the head to be heavy. So everything soft here, relax. Glutes, relaxed, belly relaxed, shoulders, jaw, feet. Approach. Relax the approach. That is, step out of your head and into your body. Don't think and rationalize. Feel and accept. If you need a break, you can lift the hips, but if you can stay here transitioning, bringing the left hand onto the left knee and starting to push that hip away, coming onto the left outer edge of the foot, we're opening up just a little bit deeper. We're here for about another minute or so. So I've had in class, when you're teaching pigeons, sometimes people start giggling. Sometimes people have cried. Whatever it is. Maybe you feel numb. Allow. So fear brought us here. Love is going to bust us out. Choose the most loving, the most gentle. choice for yourself and you'll be great. And it's funny we're talking about the full moon because it's in Scorpio and it is about to apparently, well it is, it's all about feelings. Feel the feels. Starting to move, last three breaths. And it's really quite inconvenient. Sometimes you feel the feelings. It is really a level of vulnerability. Um,
gently drawing ourselves up, taking a moment to rest. It's like earlier today, I had a meeting with a coach. Um, I'm seeing a life coach. It's funny, I'm a life coach. I'm seeing, Eve, I always say there's a more, even coaches need coaching. Um, and um, we're in our session and I just found myself crying. Um, just and feeling like I had to explain why or give reason to. And yet, so we're making our way into the um, relaxed version of pigeon. So the shin is parallel to the front edge of the mat. Just sitting on that left hip. Your right leg is bent back behind you. You've got props out in front of you to eventually lay your forearms onto and allow yourself just to relax and soften into this position. So the moral of my oral is you kind of teach what you need to learn. And there I found myself feeling embarrassed, justifying, oh, oh, trying not to cry, not to express my emotions. Um, and it's like, I've been doing all the sacral work, especially this week and here it is, this opportunity to connect um, with my sacral chakra and still learning how not to deny her her space, deny me myself of feeling my feelings. So just a little word to let you know um, we're in this together. And don't be surprised if when you get out of this, you are more emotional. It is exactly what you've been asking for. It's, it's what we're working for. Our feelings are valid. Last three breaths. Gently push ourselves up. So I'm going to ask for permission here to go on for five more minutes. Um, but if people have somewhere to go, please let me know and we can go straight into Shavasana. But if you can, give me five more minutes. I feel like I always run out of time um, with Yin. I'm on the Yin time. And um, so if you do need to um, leave, you've gotten a great class and opening into your hips and you can feel free to lie onto your back um, for the next five minutes um, you can tune us out but if you have got the time we're going to take one more pose and that is seated wide legged forward fold so working right into that meridian line onto the inner leg so that is sitting and opening your legs as wide as you can it's quite nice here to actually sit on something um, this gives us a little bit more opening into the hips so sitting on a block or a cushion, if you can spare, or that rolled up um, blanket of yours. 
um, Zamo is taking the time to get herself nice and warm um, because after this we are going into Shavasana and so it is important to stay warm and comfortable. So legs as wide as you can. If you'd like to bring that bolster or props to bring up the floor, please do those. So to sit in between the legs, you're gonna walk the hands out forward and then eventually bring yourself to, if it's available to you, bring the center of the forehead down or you could stay up on the elbows. So some of us uh, bringing the head all the way down. And if you are there, there's a tuck of the chin and so the head is nice and heavy. So whatever feels most available to you, starting to work, I'm gonna repeat again from the inner um, side of the baby toe, across the tops of the feet, ankle up the inner thigh. to that sacral hip area. The color is orange. The sound is bum. The element is water. When you think about water, it's finding that path of least resistance. It's flow, and when we're in flow, there is no self-doubt. There is no second guessing. There is belief in oneself, in your ability to get over and under and through rocks and obstacles. We think of a river, we don't have to push it forward, it just knows its direction and it goes. With 70% water. Remember who and what you are. Last three breaths. And then gently roll ourselves up. And I'm gonna leave you with one more tool for your, um, for your kidney meridian, something that you can do on your own, and that is massaging your ears. So hands onto your earlobes and a gentle massage of your ears. So this is something you can do as part of your morning self-practice just tuning in to yourself or at the end of the day, I love it. So most toes get going at the same time. <laughs> just a gentle rub and self-soothe and massage into the ears. And it's a great place if you're doing this in the morning as a part of a practice to take your five or 10 deep breaths to start off your day. So this is a great way to tune in. You can also scan the body and just noticing if there are any places of tension or how you're feeling, checking in with your emotional self. So just taking a moment, it's always great to have a bit of a morning routine just to check in.
And then when we're ready, we're going to come to lie on our back. You can, if you'd like, roll up your block, um, roll up your blanket and make it sit down the center line of your back so that um, there's a bit of an opening into your chest and your heart center. Or if you'd like to do your traditional, so it's either that or traditional Shavasana, which is back flat onto the floor, legs out in front of you. So Zomo is showing us you'd have something to sit at the sacrum, so the base of the spine, and then you roll yourself over and your top of your head can either be still on your blanket or it can be on the floor. And then just lowering the head. Yep, you're good. You guys are all good, all looking good. Let your head, so I just see A Jones. I'm not sure who it is. Let your head soften, relax. Relax all the way down, head down, all the way, yes. And unstiffen your arms, unstiffen your arms, yes. Allow the arms to come out by the side, palms are facing up, legs are out straight. Or if you tend to have lower back stuff, you can keep a bend into your knees. And here, this is like what I believe is the most important part of our practice. This is where the body gets to reset, reboot, we align and also receive the gifts of everything that we're doing. So really, again, the principles here is find your body's shape, expression of this pose, and commit to silence and stillness. That is the gift of this practice, knowing that there is nothing else for you to do. There is nowhere else for you to be but here. Relax. I'm just, I've got a bit of background noise. So I'm just going to put myself on mute, but I will be back. I'm still here and I'll bring us out of it. So just soften as much as you can. Let go as much as you can. Start to invite sensation back into the body by rolling the tongue across all the teeth. A gentle tap of the thumbs across the tips of all the fingers. Invite movement in by wriggling into your toes rolling your head from side to side. And then eventually starting to move into the legs and arms, making circles with our wrists and our ankles. 
because I'm always ready for it. Maybe you are too. Full body stretch, <laughs> reaching arms all the way back behind you. And here I want you just to do whatever feels most appropriate for you. So whatever it is, allow yourself. No right, no wrong. Your body. your domain. Eventually draw the knees into your chest, hands onto the knees, wrap the arms around the knees, give yourself a squeeze of love and appreciation, making ourselves as small, small, small as possible. And then either rolling onto your right side or rocking yourself forward, come into a seated position, cross-legged, sitting on as many brocks or props or anything else you may feel you need to elevate and this sitting on something this helps if you tend to have tight hips it allows for space and opening let's bring our hands to sit beneath the belly button connecting with that sacral chakra connecting back with that color orange our center of creativity, emotion, and thanking ourselves. Gratitude makes everything enough, and you are enough, have done enough. And we give thanks, have enough. So thank yourself. Thank your body for its efforts. We thank each other for the energy and the time that we shared. We thank everything and everyone that has brought us to this moment, recognizing we are exactly where we need to be and we are right on time. May we love ourselves. May we appreciate ourselves. May we continue to find ways to take good care. We are both precious and worth it from my heart to yours thank you have a wonderful rest of the day drink lots of water be kind to your hips and our next class is on sunday and it's a chair yoga and chair yoga is um we're offering it up as a way to practice with our moms so if you are with your mom during lockdown it's a great practice it's incredibly accessible or if not and your mom is somewhere else um send her our link tell her to grab a chair and you guys get to practice together so hope to see you guys on sunday um take care cheers love you guys thank you so cheers. much thank you so much love you too bye